for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. Bringing you the best interviews, cigar reviews, and weekly giveaways. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. Welcome back to Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We do have Bryant Falconer in the studio. How you doing today, Bryant? Hey, man, I'm doing good. Doing good. Awesome, man. Well, I just want to say first off. What's that? You were very, very missed last night during the Herf. <laughs> hey, man, I got time to spend some time with my son. Hey, man. you know what? It's all good. Yeah. But everybody was like, where's Bryant? <laughs> and I was like, you know what I told him? What's that? He's technological uh disabled no i'm not <laughs> I, <laughs> I was, was like, this isn't really his scene yeah. i said but he's gonna be here next week yes super hurt. most definitely most definitely it was uh an opportunity with both my sons uh uh to spend time with him and then we were playing grand theft auto five <laughs> for <laughs> hey, hours hey, hey. You sound like a big kid. Oh, I am, man. I mean, I was I, I grew up on video hey, games. Hey, same I was, here. I was the first. You know, we were the first generation of vi- oh, video games. Oh, we game. were. We and, were. And I'm not Did talking about Sega. Yes. Did you have an Atari. Yes. Did you have a Pong. Yes. Yeah. I had a television. I had it all, bro. I don't think I had an television. My cousin had an television, and no, oh, it was that. That's Mattel. Which one television. was the Coleco? Coleco Vision. That was that was separate. Coleco yeah, my, turned into uh, Atari. My, okay. Well, one of them sucked. All right. I even, I even still have my Mattel handheld baseball game. Really? Yeah, and it works. Really? I still play it. I didn't really care for that. Dude. I, what I loved was the football I love game. the football. It's hard you know, to it find had, those. It yeah, had three, three lines. Yeah. It's hard to find that one, man. Dude, when you ran it down Dude. you were like oh, it's going, it's going. then yeah. you come back on the other side of the thing and yeah. you're like waiting to see where they're moving then you yeah <laughs> oh man that was my thing i, I Dude, dude, school. They don't even know my son's age. He look, they he don't looking, even know. He's looking at us like, okay, old man stuff. Let yeah. me stay with these buttons. Dude, <laughs> just so you know, these young pups, uh, they don't even know the uh, evolution dude, of video games. Dude, they think they know. I'm telling you. But they don't know. That handheld baseball game, man, when you hit that home run. <laughs> now, I love it, did man. Did you ever go to the arcade and play the dude, old Olympic game? I played the where Olympic where did you ever have like the spoon? I had a pencil or a, a ruler. Pencil? I had a pencil and I never had the ruler, but I had a pencil or a spoon. And you <laughs> double tap yep. that running. <laughs> it made Dude, you run faster. That game Dude. was awesome. I was, I and was. Then it was the karate game. No, I don't remember the name of it. Galaga was me. That was before the karate yeah. game. That was, I was way I was back. A, I was a Galaga man. I hated people that were Pac Man fiends because you know they pack, they, mean, could, they remembered those patterns. Yeah, and I couldn't remember I, the I patterns. Sucked at Pac-Man. Yeah, man. And then the Mrs. Pac Man, I was like, Yard that's even going worse. Backwards. Yeah, <laughs> you're going backwards. He said they were going backwards. So, <laughs> I was not a fan, but really, I loved Missile Command. Oh, you remember yeah. that one? And then Asteroids. I loved Asteroids. Asteroids was before. Uh, Galaga, Galaga yeah, and then before Galaga, also just on the cusp was Centipede. Yeah, I hated Centipede. Oh, I like Centipede. I didn't like it because that they used to Dun- piss me Wait, off. Hey, do man. you remember uh, what was the one uh, invasion? Uh, space, alien in- space, space invaders. invaders. Yeah, dude, <laughs> my mom was laying on the sofa. <laughs> Sick because she was pregnant and she hated the sound of dude. That game, we, had, we wore that out. Oh, we wore that fun, out. Man. You remember the Atari joystick? Yes, one button and a joystick, joystick and that's it. And dude, the, that was your thumb got worked out to the point oh, where, you, yeah, when you got older. I'm gonna leave that alone. I remember. <laughs> Hey, I remember we were playing, <laughs> and I leaned my head down way close to the TV, and my buddy was being a smartass, he, and he <laughs> hit the back of my head, and I hit my forehead on the TV. Uh-huh. Well, I had a fork in my hand, and I jabbed it about three inches into his kneecap. That's assault, man. Hey, you had hey, a choice. Hey. And then they sent him home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, had to. Well, hey, did she bandage before, it up and everything? I did. Oh. And you know what I went and got? What? Rubbing alcohol. Oh, <laughs> it was, that's dirty, it was man. Great. It was great. That's dirty. <laughs> when I pulled that fork out of his knee, I mean, there was three nice, I mean, four Ooh. nice holes. 
Ooh. But anyway, hey, enough about all our past. Let's get on with the cigars. Yeah. What are you smoking today? Hey, I'm smoking a gift from you, man. I'm smoking a, a true gift from you. It's a Hoya de Nicaragua Cuatro Cinco. Look at you practicing that hey, Spanish hey, accent. Hey. I don't have a Texas uh, accent before it, so yeah. it sounds a little bit better. I'm going with something <laughs> easy for me to pronounce. Hondo. I'm going with the Medallia. <sighs> Six by forty six, great smoke. I haven't smoked this on the show for a while. His staple. It's been at least three weeks. His staple. I told you what your, your tombstone is going to say, dude. Let me tell you something. What's on that? the hearth last night, uh-huh. at least four people were smoking, smoking the medallion. Medallion. Yeah. 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 yeah, we talked a lot about the different McAuliffe line. And it's a great line. The man. Sumatra for the the bold line. I'm a Sumatra and me Montefina too. fan. I'm a Sumatra, 100%. but then when you get up into the uh, uh gomez sanchez lines i'd like the uh of course i like the reserva Reserva. Mm -hmm. yeah that lights out bam but anyway the medallia dude you know i can't get that far away from it that's your your staple that's your go-to that's your 100 percent go-to i was talking to a gentleman yesterday i had to go get my my wife's tire fixed she lost some weights on it so we had to go get it balanced and we went to this tire shop and i had this hat on Oh, nice. And a gentleman looked up. He said, oh, he said, you smoke sticks? I was like, yeah, do I? So you see the hat I have on. He's like, oh, he said, what's that? I said, oh, you haven't heard? <laughs> Where you been? Where you haven't heard? This is Cigar Talk. You know, me and a guy from, named Rob, we're from here. And we, He's like, really? He said, well, where do you go smoke? I said, well, we go to the I used to go to the leave. And he started talking. I was like, man, we had a nice conversation. But I talked to him about McAuliffe and certain other lines. And then I, I pitched to him. I was like, you know. The leaf is getting ready to move. And I said, when did you love smoking? He said, man, every time I go, I get out there and start queuing. I said, so the next time you queue, let me know when you go to the leaf. I'll meet you down there. We'll go through the humidor, find what you want, and then I'm going to talk about what you, how you feel about it on, nice. the, on the podcast. For real? He now, when you at, say queuing, you mean playing pool? Barbecue. Oh, okay. Barbecue, excuse me. I'm from up north. We I, call it yeah, Q. I, I was like, I don't know Q. We Q. I know what a Q stick is. Yeah. I know what a Q ball is. And you know what a barbecue I is. I do. <laughs> so we're queuing. But, um, gotcha. You know, he said, oh, I, I didn't even know they were moving. I was like, oh, yeah, they're moving. They should have been moved, but they're moving. But it was an opportunity to let somebody know, you know, about one of our sponsors, McAuliffe. Right. And he was like, oh, you said, I never heard. I said, man, they're from here. They're here. In Austin, in Fort Worth, in Texas, they're Texas. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're Texas. They're Texas. Everywhere you look in Texas, is, he's like, I never heard. I said, Oh, bro, you just don't know what you're missing. And it was a uh, Bill Williams Tire Shop. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, is that on Buffalo Gap? No, Treadway. 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 Okay, I'm thinking of that other place used to be yeah. Abilene mm-hmm. Tire. Yeah. Then it changed to something else, but now it's closed. Yeah, it I don't is. Know closed. What happened to them? But it was it was great. It was an opportunity here again. The community, the Always. stick brought us together. Always. The stick brought us together, man. It was it was great. Let me get off of that. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about what we're drinking. You're drinking tea. 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 I'm drinking. Something special. <laughs> I'm drinking the old Forrester 1910 again. Man, I drank some of this last night on the Herf. I also drank the Elijah Craig small batch. Yeah, I'm looking at the empty bottle. That Elijah Craig <laughs> is good, but the old Forrester 1910 takes it to a whole yeah. other level. We try, what Dude, was that, it is uh, so freaking smooth. The radio show we had that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that's But the thing about so it is, this, this is just, oh. Yes, sir. Man, it's got Neat. that. Yes. Oh, well, here's the bad thing about drinking neat. And, you know, that's how I prefer Mm -hmm. my whiskey. Me too. And, but because it, dude, at nine, at nine o'clock last night. Uh No, I'm sorry. At 11 o'clock last night here in Abilene, Texas, it was 90 degrees. It was. So when you're in the studio. It was still hot as sin. Oh, (laughs) it was at least 80 in here. And let me tell you, I don't enjoy drinking neat when the, Room temperature is 80. Not because I'm hot, because the booze is it hot. It is hot. You're drinking one of those hot drinks right now. But I but I adjusted. I sacrificed. How you do that? I pulled through. I tilted the glass up. That's the only thing you can do. And it emptied. It did. It did. I, Just like that Elijah Craig bottle dude, did. I didn't go to bed last night till 4. I think I got off the hearth about 2. Tim bailed out at 1. Patrick... <laughs> I heard. Patrick passed out. 
Dude, he was like sitting there slumped over. <laughs> we we're like, dude, are you okay? <laughs> That's when you know you're having a ball, man. When dude, you just, we had you, a great you time. hate to leave. We had a new guy come by the Herf last night, Leo mm -hmm. from McAllen, Texas. I was like, dude, when the corona's over, That's we got to get down That's there. Down south. That's on the tip. Yeah. But I was like, I've heard there's a lot of good lounges down there. Yeah. He was like, yeah, there are. So whenever there's travel allowed again yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to go down there i have no problem i'd like to go it. down there for like a couple of days yeah. hang out and just smoke cigars It'll take a couple of days to drive down there as long as texas dude is. let me tell you something Jesus. i don't know what it is from abilene but from lubbock mcallen is like 13 hours yeah. You know how you know where I'll be in thirteen hours? Home. Home. <laughs> I know. Because we used to drive from two St. states Louis away to Lubbock. Yeah. And it was fourteen yeah, hours. Yeah, two states away. Yeah. <laughs> two states away. Dude, if you drive from uh what is El it? El Paso uh, to uh El Paso to like uh, Beaumont, Mark, mm -hmm. that's like seventeen hours. Yep, seventeen hours. That's just going across Texas. Texas. Yeah. You haven't even hit another state yet. No. You're still in Texas. That's two full time jobs and an extra hour. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Well, you know, that was back in the day. Now when you get out there on the interstate, especially I think on the 10. speed limit's like eighty five out on there. On ten. Yeah. On ten and then you have to hit twenty to go so straight. Could across probably, you could probably do it now in about 15 hours Yeah, because it's it's 80 to 85 on 10 and then you have to hit 20 20 at his highest is 75 and you just go straight across 75 the rest of the way well i'll tell you what was interesting on the herf last night was several people commented how good the medallion was it's a good stick man and i was like you guys think that i'm just blowing smoke and I am because I love blowing smoke. I like but, how you put that in. There. Yeah, <laughs> but when it comes to the medallia, it's lights out. Yeah, for you, oh, dude, it's a good stick. But when it comes to me with a McAuliffe, it's just Sumatra. You're the Sumatra I'm guy. The, <sighs> well, I'll tell you what, I've, I've been smoking too. Is the Leanda number two? Yes, that's a good. I stick. I still got two more. Nice. One is going to stay. I may make smoke that other one sometime soon, but one is going to stay in the bottom of the uh, humidor. I'm gonna right. let it I sit. smoked a land of two yesterday, and whoo, yeah, man. It's nothing that's, like it, brother. That's, it's a totally different experience oh, yes. than the medallion. Oh, yes. But it's still like when you're smoking it, you know you're smoking a quality a premium stick. stick. And you know you have something that somebody put everything into, into it. Yes. Yeah. I'm with you on you that. You know what one. I haven't had in a while, though, What's that? is the Reserva. I had one the other day. Did you really? Yeah. Oh. Matter of fact, it was going to be one of my top three this week. Wow. <laughs> well, I would imagine yes. it is. Yeah. You yes. were going all out. Yeah. Hey, I didn't enjoy myself this week, man. It was first full week back at work. <sighs> I need. I wish I had an Andalusian and something else. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, you know, I had a good week. I really did. It was a good week. Work's going good? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got yeah. that person hired? They start Monday. Nice. They start Monday. Yeah. Needed them too because what people we we are in the pandemic, but people are buying and selling cars like Dude, it's nothing. car sales are like skyrocketing. <laughs> like it's nothing, man. I have a friend that sells cars and I was like, dude, I heard you are busy and he's like, dude, I've never seen it. Yes. People are spending he's money, been, man. He's been selling cars for 20 years. Yes. And he says right now they're selling more cars than he's ever sold. It's it's amazing. It's it's just like we're thinking, okay, we can have a little break because, of, no, we're doing more now than we did. I was like, God, why, where are all these cars at well, You now? know what I think it is? People have been trapped home. Yeah. They got a stimulus check, mm -hmm. and, and they, they got to spend get it. out and buy something. That's what my mama said, burning a hole in your pocket. <laughs> I can tell you this. My stimulus check went to buy a new fence. Oh yeah, you did. Nothing get to exciting. Fence. I didn't. You know where my stimulus check it's went to? It's in the to? bank. It or went your to kids. It was some of the kids. Yeah, the kids got some. Didn't they get grown. a stimulus yeah. check though? Yes. So why they get part of yours? The one I gave to Denali to got. She got her. She got her uh, income tax, her stimulus check, and her check from her job because she works on base. And your Denali. And, I, and my Denali, and she still hit me up with some more money. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. But see, I am the baby. I'm like, yeah, but you're grown. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're grown. <laughs> oh, my hey, God. But I You know what's so funny is I have a good friend that used to work for me, and he retired about two or three years ago. So he's 62 now, 63. Mm -hmm. 
And about four years ago, five years ago, I was like, man, because he was telling me about his kids. They're like uh-huh. in their 30s. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I cannot wait until my kids leave home <laughs> and I don't have to spend all my money on them. And he busted out laughing. He's so like, that don't it mean nothing. never ends. No, sir. It never no, sir. ends. I had to realize it because I was that same way with my mom and my dad. You know, if they, my mother told me, if you need, you better come to me. That's what she told me. And my dad was like, he just said that with this look on his face like, you heard her. <laughs> so when my son was living with me, just me and him, because my ex-wife was in Iraq, you know, it was like it was a lot of time. So I got hit up with stuff because, you know, I was a cop and I had a set budget and I have another mouth right. in the house and I have to take care of it. And it was like, oh, man, I was like, hey, mama, she said, what is it? And I say, well, I need to do this for Brian. She's like, how much? Let me as long as something. I put his name in there. She gave the money, but I was like, you know, can I get? She said, "No, nah, you grown." Now, now, <laughs> what were? Where were you in the totem pole? Were you the oldest? I am oldest. Yes, see, I'm the oldest also. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was the opposite. Hmm. Like I left home, I got a good job. I mean, you know, for a twenty year old, mm-hmm. I had a good job. I was making probably eight hundred dollars every two weeks, which was back then. You know, when you're thinking that's 1990 yeah that's pretty good money for a 20 year old that is and my dad lost his job my parents actually became homeless Mm. my brothers were homeless wow so all my money was going to them yeah and they actually moved in with some really good friends of ours for about three weeks until my dad got a job but literally for like two weeks my parents and my brothers yeah. were homeless, yeah. and I lived down in Midland. So, I mean, when I got paid, that $800 home. I got, I got about 300 and I was Just sending 500 to them. Yeah, yeah. So, I was like, I didn't think this is the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. It's supposed to be the other way around. But, but you, you know what? It, Family. Oh, most definitely. When you think about it, it gives you... It, you know, to me, there are times like or like now I'm going to take over the tax on the property that we have back home because my mom, she'll be 70 this year. She don't need to be worried about that. You know, she got the house right. and everything, the property. I'll take over that. It it makes me feel good inside that I can do something for my parents. Just like you know, that's what it gives for you. You know, You're, but and it's not even a. It's not even a have to. Uh-uh. It's it's family. Yeah, that's and you, what want, you to. want to. You want to you know do. I mean? You want to do it, and that's where hey, I'm at. And besides, the money that I kept, uh-huh. you don't even want to know what all that oh, money went Lord. on. So oh, it wasn't Lord. like I was hurting. <laughs> yeah, oh, Lord. And it's funny. You know who because, we talking about? <laughs> so it's funny because you know my friend Tim. Yeah. So me and him both were living in Midland at the time, working for the same company. The company paid for our apartment. So we had no bills. So, so all you had to do was feed yourself. All we had to do, well, we we had food and booze. <laughs> <laughs> we had to stay stocked up in the booze department. Was, let me tell you, that was the item in the budget: food, clothing, oh, no. here's, gas. Here's what the beer. budget was: <laughs> every Friday when we got paid, uh-huh. we went and bought three cases of Milwaukee's best water, <laughs> the Beast, <laughs> and a handle of Jim Beam. Okay, I can see the handle of Jim Beam, but y'all got water and Jim Beam. <laughs> exactly. But you know what? You could get a case of the Beast. It was like seven dollars yeah, yeah, for a case. Yeah. I know your water bill was outrageous because I was <laughs> always in that, <laughs> dude, flushing the toilet. Have you ever been to Midland? Yes. Have you it's ever dry. Had, have you ever drank the water there? No, dude. They I was have, told not to drink. Yeah, the water they have there. the worst water in the world. I can tell you this: you could be so dehydrated because you were so hungover <laughs> and you wouldn't still take a wouldn't drink, drink. no still wouldn't drink that's it. how bad the water is wow. you would literally go without and just suffer and that's that's amazing to me because as kids that's all we did was drink water out the tap well out you, the garden hose but, but over the, there it's an oil field oh yeah oh okay. water now, yeah yeah yeah, yeah tastes yeah. like a minerals minute. like you've never had yeah, before and I it's got bad you. i got you lubbock did not have good water but it was drinkable yeah I, I i was amazed at that because with my son when he was living with me you know i forced him to go outside now you're not gonna sit in the house during the summer i gotta go to work you going outside to do something and he'd be like i'm thirsty grab a garden hose <laughs> 
dude, that's all we use. He was like, what you mean, Dad? That's been laying on a Dude, shut up and grab the garden hose. Yeah, he, dude, the garden hose was your yeah, water. That, he, that was he, your water he, fountain. He wanted a bottle of water. Man, if you don't grab that garden hose and turn that water on, dude, we, let we, it run for we, a little while. We, hey, we didn't even have bottled no, water. Yeah, you know what was bottled water? You ran the garden hose into a bottle and you carried that with you. That's but, what you drank out but of. But no one even thought nah, of bottled water. Nah, if we would have thought of bottled water back then, we would be millionaires. Billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's talk about McAuliffe Cigar, our sponsor, right quick. You guys know they're our sponsor. We are so grateful to have them. They are just knocking it out of the park. Knocking it out of the park. Continually. I mean, the innovation that comes out of McAuliffe, for one, is impressive. Mm -hmm. Because let's just put aside for a second that they have a cigar line that is amazing. Yeah. What they're doing behind the scenes is laying the groundwork for a completely new industry standard. Oh yes. oh, yes. I mean, the way they support the brick and mortar, I don't know of another. Now, and here's the thing. All the cigar companies talk about supporting brick and mortar, but McAuliffe puts their money where their mouth where is. Where your actions. Yeah. yeah. When you see what they're doing, mm -hmm. you're like, these guys, they don't just talk the talk. They, they walk the bar. Walk. They said yeah. the bar. And it's rather high, too. It's rather oh, high. Oh, dude. I'm I'm still waiting for other cigar companies to basically copy everything they do. They're going to be uh, eventually. They're going to yeah. have to because, because what um, McAuliffe has done is raise the bar. And if you're not going to jump on board and raise the bar for your company, you're, you're going to get left yeah, behind. You're going to get swallowed up. And when I meet people who have never smoked a McAuliffe cigar, I'm like, dude. You got to get your hands yes, on them sir. Yes, because sir. for one, they're quality sticks. I never have to worry about a McAuliffe cigar being plugged. Every single one is tested on a machine to make sure the draw is good. Yes, sir. They have some of the best blends on the market. And so at $4 to $42. <laughs> four, four, not four. four at four, four dollars to 42. To 42. Tell the truth. <laughs> Everybody can find a yes, stick that's in there. In fact, last night, Tim was smoking a Torcedor. <sighs> I think Bill White, he smoked three McAuliffe's on the show last night. Good Lord. He smoked yeah. like you? Oh, yeah. He was knocking them out. <laughs> well, and then, then again, y'all were on there at a four o'clock hey, anyway. So. Patrick had a McAuliffe medallion. Ben from Hawaii yeah. had a McAuliffe medallia, and he was going on and on about it. And he was even telling me, usually he's more in that heavy profile, mm -hmm. but he was super amazed at the complexity of the blend of yes. the medallia. And I was like, that's where I was. Yeah. When I found the medallia, I was more of a like medium full to full blown yeah, kick you in the teeth. That's all you wanted. Right. That's all you wanted. And then wanted. when I found the medallion, it opened my eyes. It opened your palate too. Because yeah, then you started really changing. Did. You really changed. Dude, this has been the cigar that has changed <laughs> the my eye, yeah, it the really, eye opener. It really has been, man. <laughs> so anyway, also if you're not at a McAuliffe ambassador, take the opportunity Free. because I don't know how long they're gonna keep letting new ambassadors in the yeah, program yeah i can't imagine that they're gonna just keep letting everybody yeah. so don't miss the opportunity because it's here now go by our website click on the link become a mccallif ambassador they send you a coin with your own number on it <laughs> what are you laughing at you know <laughs> <laughs> All I can tell you is I'm proud to be 298. <laughs> so ah. somebody was on the show last night that was like 4,058. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, man. You in the four digits. Dude, <laughs> way up. They're getting Ooh. way up. In fact, I think there's some 5,000s now. Wow. But anyway, go by our website. All you got to do is fill out a short form. You'll get your medallion coin with your own personal number. You'll also get a handwritten certificate. Yes. You'll get an invitation to join the private Facebook group yes. for the ambassadors. And Bill White was even talking last night. What a great community that has mm. become. Mm. And, you know, Bill won one of the passport he giveaways he right did. out the gate. First one out the gate. I was like, look at this. That dude is on it. But anyway, uh, definitely go by and check out McAuliffe. Yes, sir. Man, we're big fans. Yes, sir. You know, I like to say... That yeah, McAuliffe is a sponsor of our show, but before, but I chased them. Yeah. They didn't chase me. Nope. Nope. I I I pursued that relationship because I was so impressed with the company 
and the cigars. And the sticks. Because Al McAuliffe, dude, <laughs> he's a legend. Yeah. I still want to have a one-on-one interview with that dude, not just about cigars, but about his life. Yeah, just life. Because that dude just amazes he me. He has a life to talk about, oh, too. Oh, man. He does. Everything that he's been involved <sighs> in and done, I would like to hear his stories. Man. And he's one of those guys, when he tells a story, everybody yeah. shuts up yeah, and listens. E.F. Hutton. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. E.F. E.F. Hutton. Hey, so let's uh, jump over to the pick six of the week. Yes, sir. You got your three? Almost definitely. All right. Let's see what you got. You know what? I don't have my phone with me. Ah, hey, Luke, sis. while he's doing his pick three, would you run out to my car and get my phone that I left in the car? You don't have to quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, uh, the thing about it is, since you you, may, you talked about one of them, I'm gonna pull another one out. So my first one's gonna be. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you doing four? Or are you doing three? three? I'm just okay. doing three because you put you talked about one, so I'm gonna pull another three. Okay. Uh, the Perdomo lot, twenty three. Okay, which one? The Maduro or the Connecticut? C- the Maduro. Okay. Woo-hoo, loved it. That Did it have the new band on it? Yes. Dude, that's a nice upgrade it for that stage. It is. I always thought that it that is. old band was ugly. It is, but this new one is kind of eye-opening. It catches you. It catches yeah, your eye. They did a nice job on the Then that Aladino that you gave me. Ooh, how'd you like that? <sighs> Again. Dude, Larry Again. got one of those from me, and he was just like, Again. That's a good And stick. see, he's one of those full to a medium yeah. to full uh, All guys also. So it, it, open your palate up, man. Open your palate up. And then my last one. All right. What I'm, I'm going to stay with it. The Reserva, baby. I'm going to wow. stay with yeah, it. Yeah, well, of Reserva. course you have to keep that I got, one in I the got top. T- I, because that was the one. It was I, I actually smoked I think it was Wednesday. You know, there was a lot of frustration going on. I had a lot of things that needed to be done at work. And I had to get stuff done. So at lunch, I said, no, I'm taking me a lunch because I haven't been able to take a lunch in the last two weeks I've been working. So wait a minute. You smoked a Reserva on your lunch break? Yes, sir. Nice. Sitting in the truck. Now that is a lunch. Sitting in the truck right out front. (laughs) Sitting in the truck right out front just enjoying myself, man. Just sitting there. And the world was oblivious to me. All I had was my stick and my tea. And I was like, ah. Hey, you know what? That's a good lunch. When I got done, I didn't want to go back. <laughs> now, did you eat anything? Or no, did you no, just it's, just, it's just that. Just that. Very just nice, that. man. Very just nice. That. So my top three this week. First, I'm going to start with the Oliva V Maduro. Great stick. And let me tell you something. I've actually crossed over. I actually prefer the V over the Melania V. Wow. I know, right? The wow. Melania is a good stick. It is. But just the V series that has won me over. It's, that complicate, it's, it's com- to me it has a more complex yes. flavor profile. The Melanio is kind of like very chocolate mm-hmm. cocoa. Yeah. And it has a little earthiness in it. But the just the, the V series, series yeah. has way more complexity. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've really I've I've I like both. But if I got to pick one, that's a great stick to give a not just a newbie, but somebody who's been smoking. They're new to it, but they've been smoking for a minute to let them understand what complexity can be. Yeah. What flavors can you taste in this? What, 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 can you, can I, you feel I think the, it would be a good setup for someone to smoke both of those yes, yes. and compare them. But the to two. start off with the V and right. then go to because the Because they, they do have some similar characteristics. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. Uh, so, number two is. Is the Caldwell Blind Man's Puff. <laughs> Dude, I've been on that. Like that Caldwell I just gave you. Well, it's Dude. called the Blind Man Bluff, but I like I to say, say Puff. Because <laughs> yeah. I puff on that bad boy. <laughs> but that's a great stick, man. Mm. And I'm a fan of Caldwell cigars mm. in general. I know last week you were smoking the, what was it, the Pacific Standard? Pacific Standard, yeah, yes. And that's a great stick. So then my next and final was the New World by A.J. Fernandez, but it was the Cameroon. Okay. I'm a How big, was that? Oh, man. It was rich. Okay. You know, I've gotten to where I really enjoy the Cameroon yes. flavor profile. And I was listening it's to It's a last, different season. Yeah, it really is. Now, you know the Cameroons come from, from Africa. Africa. Yeah. And there's like... It's it's not a very friendly environment uh-uh. to grow tobacco. But that soil allows for is, that. Yeah. Oh. 
Well, you know, really, it's the environment mm-hmm. that's tough on the people, yes. not the plant. Mm-hmm. The plant grows amazing, but a lot of people like get malaria yeah. over there and some other diseases because it's it's like a place that's uninhabited, yeah. and it's like. We're going to make this tobacco no matter what. <laughs> so when you smoke a Cameroon, you better be appreciative you got of to those be guys. Appreciative of yeah. That because, it, I mean, it's just something about that environment, and that soil that makes that Cameroon. Oh, God. You, you can tell the difference. You really can tell the difference. Hey, guys. So coming up next, we've got a special guest, Tony Carvajal. He is a master trainer he's worked with professional athletes he's worked with uh people like models and actors and stuff like that's trying to get their business on but the cool thing is his heritage is in cuba and now he's getting into the realm of the uh, cigar industry so he's got a great story you're not going to want to miss that and so we'll be right back after the break Hey guys, thanks for hanging through the break. We have a special guest with us today, all the way from New York, and his name is Tony Carvajal. He's a entrepreneur. He is a master fitness instructor. He is now getting into the cigar business. And you might think, why would a guy who's in the fitness business and an entrepreneur jump into the cigar business? But he's got a very unique history, and he has some ties to Cuba. So we're going to explore that, find out what's going on with tony tony welcome to the show how you doing today rob thank you for having me i'm i'm doing great man you know more blessed than i deserve well i think we all fall into that category so hey let's jump right in i mean i've told everybody that you're an entrepreneur you do uh all kinds of things with fitness so tell us a little bit about your history i mean you where did you go to school at how did you get into the fitness give us a little background there so i'm i was born and raised in miami florida um, I played sports throughout my, my entire life. I played for Christopher Columbus High School in Miami. I played for FAU. Um, now, what you, what'd you play? I mean, are we talking about croquet? Are we talking about baseball or football? What would you play? Well, I played baseball and football my whole life, but I played uh, football collegiately. Oh, okay, nice. And so, so what'd you um, play? So what yeah. position did you play in college? I got I to gotta make sure that you were actually a football player and not just a punter. <laughs> so, some of those guys are in great shape man i, I played <laughs> i played outside linebacker actually okay we'll see that um, and we we qualify you as an actual football player so that's good all right i'm glad i'm glad i got the the pass <laughs> so yeah i i played uh you know played sport organized sports my whole life and uh, went to went to when ended up at business school at fiu after um one year at fau i kind of uh decided to to hang up the pads and get back to my schooling. So, um, right after my, right after college, I dove into the fitness industry, um, started my fitness career and w- went on to, to training professional athletes, training models, and, you know, some famous people as, w- as well, opening my own gym in Miami in the Brickell area, kind of like the young and upscale area, uh, ran that for about three years and, as that progressed, uh, many doors opened because of, you know be through social media, and um, yeah, and 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 that that from there is has led to to many different different opportunities. And I'm I've never been to the Miami area, but you know you see it on TV. I would I would suspect that the fitness industry is super competitive out there. Yes, I would say L, um, L.A. or the West Coast, New York. And Miami are the three largest, um, you know, industries in the country at the moment. Yeah, because everybody in those locations want to look great. You know, if you come out here to Texas, we're like, eh, we're good the way we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's it's very competitive. It's very um, uh, leading edge. It's very trendy. So, uh, which I think these are things I'm good at. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm good at, I'm good at, I play the market. I, I'm good at the futures. So I'm kind of like that guy. I, I like to sense what's, what's next and, and what's going on. So it's always gone very well for me. And, 
And in that same fashion, um, I've opened up other businesses, uh, a digital media company. I have a influencer or a social media personality management company as well. So, you know, I, I've got my, my hand in, in a, in a few of the, a few different cookie jars, I guess you could say. Very nice. So how did you get introduced into the cigar industry? I mean, that's a big leap. I mean, a lot of people would think just because you're going from one extreme of being the fitness guy to the cigar guy. So how do you, how do you make that leap? Well, it started because my platform started to evolve where I started realizing that people were more interested in my lifestyle and how I got to where I was and still interested in workouts and stuff like that. But they wanted to know how I did it because because like I said, things started to evolve. I started traveling more often for business. I started, you know, doing uh, photo shoots and in magazines and, and, and I was doing, I've been doing write-ups for major magazines, men's health insider, Yahoo finance and things like that. And I guess the lifestyle itself that came with all the work ethic and the entrepreneurship, I think people started becoming intrigued by it and wanting me to blog more about it, document it more. And as that started to happen, I started to realize how powerful you know, this social media tool is, um, a lot of different brands started coming out of the woodworks. Um, and, and it started with, with fashion and, and, um, you know, th- as travel, and, uh, you know, uh, would collaborate with, with resorts and travel around the world and, and, and do stuff, you know, for social media when it came to that as well. And while, while I was doing that, I'd be smoking cigars because, because just because I, I smoke cigars, I've been smoking cigars my entire life. Um, and when that happened, s- some brands started reaching out, out to me and asking me to influence for their cigar brand or for their uh, cigar subscription. So that's how that started. In okay. The and um, so let me back and, you up just a minute. How yeah. did you get into cigars originally? So, so my my father and my grandfather, my, my, my father's side of the family is from Cuba. Oh, okay. So my father came to these, to the States when he was 10 years old to Miami. Um, my, my grandfather was a, a professor at the university of Havana and my, my family lived in Pina de Rio, which is right next to Havana, which is one of the number one, um, uh, tobacco, uh, you know, factories and fields and plantations in the world. So when they, when they came over, um, unfortunately my, my great grandfather died at 12. So I I mean, I'm sorry, my great grandfather died when my father was 12. So he was working at a gas station since, you know, he got here and my mother's from West Virginia and they met in Miami and got married and had me. Well, thank God for that. And, um, so we come from this working class family and as I was growing up, all my family parties, you know, we would be all, you know, my uncles, my my grandfather, my my father, everybody would be smoking cigars, playing dominoes, listening to, to Cuban salsa music. Oh, dancing. that's awesome, man. And these are like my first memories, you know. Yeah. And and I even remember like being a little kid and and one of my, you know, my father letting me try this, you know, puff cigar real quick and just see what it tastes like (laughs) right and you know those 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 memories were usually either a holiday or a celebration because someone was having a kid or someone was getting married or someone got that job and it was just always about a good good thing in my life yeah cigars now i take that when you're like that whole vibe is very nostalgia for you and takes you back to those family times correct it it, there's like this romance about it where where you know certain smells uh trigger certain memories and i associate cigar the cigar smoke the cigar the, the whole process, I can associate it to family, to success, to happiness. So it's almost like every time I, I light up a cigar, it just it just naturally brings in, you know, those endorphins and um, takes me there. Yeah. And, and and I just love it. It's 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 a true passion of mine. It, it's just it just really connects me to my roots, and um, everything about it, man. The craftsmanship, the history. 
um, you know, those 200 hands it takes to, you know, to go through before it gets to you, before you light that, you know, before you cut that foot and you, I mean, I mean, before you light that foot, you cut that cigar. I mean, for me, it's just, it's just, it's like I said, it's romantic. Yeah. And, you know, I, I like the fact that you're not just jumping in the cigars with no experience, no history. You understand what it takes to build a cigar, the craftsmanship that goes into building a good cigar. And, I mean, it's really honoring that you're doing something with your family history. So, like, what do you see yourself doing in the cigar industry? I mean, what are you doing now and what do you plan on doing? So, currently, um, I've partnered with My Cigar Pack. And it's a monthly subscription where you get about five cigars. Depending on your plan, you get five cigars a month, depending on your palate. And, you know, they're they're good quality. The cigars, you got some staples in there. And then you have some some of the newer, you know, boutique brands in there as well, um, which is really cool. I think it's really great for this newer generation of cigar smokers, right? The, so there's there's this whole new generation of young, successful, fit, you know, guys and girls that 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 are like me, right? That are that are maybe not as you know as versed in the history or or, or engulfed in it like I was brought up around it. But they also enjoy cigars and they just don't know as much about it. So I think this is really great. It gives um, it gives that clientele base or that person an opportunity to try different brands and, and, and you know, keep that wrapper because, oh, man, this one was great. I love the way this one burned. And, oh, this is the style I like. And and, and it's it's really cool because it really you know, like I said, it gives you the opportunity to try a bunch of different types of cigars and figure out what your what your palate is and what it is that you like. Yeah, and I'm a um, fan for the monthly c- cigar subscriptions just because if you're a new cigar smoker, it gives you the opportunity to try several different sticks that maybe you would never have the opportunity to try. But also for the more experienced cigar enthusiast, I like it too because – even though you may have smoked a lot of cigars, there's a lot of cigars out there, especially through the boutique brands that people don't have the chance to smoke, maybe because of their geo, their geo, <laughs> geographical uh, location. So it really is an opportunity to try smokes because i know i've done a couple of them and every month man it's like christmas you know you get to open up this box and see what's in there and you know sometimes there's cigars in there that you don't like but that's part of the education because trust me i smoked a ton of cigars that i didn't like but they weren't through a cigar monthly subscription that was just you know (laughs) sticks that i tried at shops so it is a journey to figure out what you like and i think that journey never ends because i still try cigars that i've never had on a regular basis of course i still have my you know my go-to and a a lot a lot of my my staples and the ones that i love but i'm always trying new cigars and i think i think this is like i said i think this is this is really cool because we we we're tapping into this younger generation i think um as far as my cigar pack goes and i'm getting a lot of interest and I get a lot of questions and a lot of people reaching out to me. What should I start with? What type of cigar should I smoke? What type of cigar do you do you smoke? You know, and and I understand that I, I can I can get how, you know, you're you're new to the to the world and you just want to figure out what you like. So I think uh, right now this is this is great. We're going to eventually come out with the Carvajal edition uh, in the next couple months. Oh, nice. I'm going to be I'm going to be going to uh, some of the factories and I'm going to be picking out the smoke myself. And nice. we're, we're, we're documenting this whole process because, I mean, I'm an infant, right, in this in this industry. I understand that there's generations and generations they, uh, of, you know, family ties and people that have been doing this forever. And even though I'm a historian, I know that that I know I know that I don't know anything compared compared. Right. So I'm really glad that I have this really um uh, educated and, 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 you know, um, an experienced partner, um, Alex, who, who's from the Dominican Republic and has been working in the field since he was a kid. And he's, a, he's an attorney now. He's a great guy. And him and I together, we're, I think we're a great partnership and we're able to kind of bring this, this, uh, this culture and this lifestyle that we love so much to this new new younger generation i'm really excited about that well i can tell everyone this i know tony's determination level 
And so he is going to produce a great cigar. And that being said, I expect you to send me some when you get some made. I want to try the Carver Hall line of cigars. Yes. Well, I need your opinion. I mean, let's start with that. Hey, so, well, I've always got an opinion when it comes to a cigar. So, yes, <laughs> anytime, brother. Guaranteed. The first, cigar, the first Carver Hall cigars line. Um, you, you'll be, you'll be one of the first. All to, right, man. We look forward to it. We really look I forward to it. So have you been down to the DR before? I've been to the DR. I've been, um, I've been to Cuba as well. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be going back and we're um, to, specifically to both actually. And, um, we'll be documenting the whole thing. Like, a, like I said, I, I want to document, I'm about to launch my website. It's about to go up any day now, TonyCarvalhall.com. We're going to have a blog on there, and we're going to be documenting this whole process. So the whole process of building Carvalhall cigars and my cigar pack will all be documented, and, and, and we're going to take everyone through it. And as I learn and as I grow, I, I'm, you know, it'll be there for everyone to see. So it's really exciting for me and and. And exciting too to to be able to carry on my family's name. I, I've got my family also working on the project with me, so it's just like it's really bringing us together. And I, I just think it's such a beautiful thing to be able to honor um, our family name and our and you know and our ancestors by by starting this brand. Yeah, I like it, man. I think that's really cool that you're embracing your heritage. And you're doing something with your family involved. Uh, I'd look for great things to come out of Carvajal Cigars. And so tell everybody where they can find you, like on social media. So uh, my personal brand and my page is Tony Carvajal underscore. At, I'm sorry, on Instagram is at Tony Carvajal underscore. So Tony, C-A-R-V-A-J-A-L underscore. Um TonyCarvalhall.com is about to launch uh, that platform. We're going to have a lot of, you know, blogging, a lot of uh, interviews or a lot of podcast, a lot of things going on. There's going to be a lot of traffic. There's a huge store on there. Um, there's, you know, there's sections on fitness, there's sections on fashion and lifestyle, there's sections on cigars. And um, I'm also on Facebook, Tony Carvajal or Carvajal Cigars on Facebook. And you can also follow Carvajal Cigars on Instagram. It's Carvajal Cigars at Carvajal Cigars. Okay, cool, man. Well, I think it's cool that you're going to document and basically create a journey for people to go with you on this journey. I think that's really cool. I enjoy following people who do that type of thing. So we look forward to seeing what you're going to do. Uh, well, man, that's going to wrap up this week's video, or excuse me, interview, and uh, we'll be putting it up later on today. And so uh, we'll put a link to your website down below the episode. And so if anybody wants to swing by and check out what you're doing or follow along as you progress on your journey, they can kind of tag along with you, man. Amazing. Rob, I, I greatly appreciate the time. I've, I've, you know, I've always been a fan of the show. And um, man, it means the world to me that you take the time out to to, uh, to have this cool conversation. Oh, man, we appreciate you taking the time to come. We know you're a super busy guy. This guy gets up at like 4 o'clock in the morning and works his butt off all day. And so we look forward to seeing what you're going to do. Everything that you've touched has been a success. And we're big fans of the Carvajal brand. So we can't wait to see what you do, brother. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Yeah, you caught me in the middle of an editing session right now. We're editing right now as we speak. So it's kind of cool that we're working and, and doing this podcast at the same time. I think that, that kind of defines um, the lifestyle. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, take care of yourself. And if you need anything at all, feel free to reach out, man. We'll be here for you. I greatly appreciate it, Rob. Thank you so much. All right, brother. Take care. Oh, easy, big fella. Easy. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Scratching ski. Scratching. Yeah, yeah. Scratching. Hey, so we're going to talk a little bit about something that's not really cigar related at all. <laughs> but yes, it's, it a, it's a topic that's been going around, and I'm not sure how much you know about it. But are you aware about all the talk about taking the guns away from Elmer Fudd and... Yo, Samity Sam. It's 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 cigar related, because Elmer Fudd smokes a cigar. 
He used to have a cigar in his mouth. So so did Samity Sam. Mm-hmm. Samity Sam smoked cigars. Mm-hmm. So it's cigar related. Okay. But <sighs> here we go again. What does that have to do with anything that's really going on? Well, wait a minute. Because how many times has Yosemite Sam and Emma Foot fired their weapons and hit anything? Never. Ne- unless it was their own self. Yeah. Or Daffy Duck and made his build twist around. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Other than that, when? If, when? You remember, you, you know one of my favorite episodes when it was like they were arguing duck, duck season, season, rabbit, rabbit season. season, duck season. <laughs> that, that was a then great Bug episode. Said, then Bug said rabbit season and Daffy said duck season, shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great episode. <laughs> so anyway, though, here's my thing. And I think there's a lot of misinformation going around on this. Because when I first heard it, I heard that they were going back through all the old episodes and taking the guns out. And that's not the case. That's not the case. This is only on HBO Max, and it's only on new Bugs Bunny cartoons. So I don't have a problem with it. Now I can it's see. their new project. Yeah, now I can see. And they see. can do however they want to do yeah. it. I don't care. I was upset because originally I had heard they were going to go back in digitally and take out the guns. But you have to change the concept of the cartoons, too. Right, because right. Of, especially with the one we was just talking about. Right. Well, even going back in the Looney Tunes, you remember, like, whenever they would have the gangsters? Yeah. You remember that little, little short? short yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And then you had you got Marvin the Martian with his laser gun. gun. Is he going to take it away from him? But here's the funny thing that I thought was interesting was even on the new cartoons they're doing without the guns, uh-huh. like Elmer Fudd is chasing Bugs Bunny with a sickle. That's worse. <laughs> right? So That's morbid as can be. So, <laughs> so you're turning a gun shooter into a... A mass murderer. <laughs> right. Into a serial killer. <laughs> what's, what's, what's that one with the uh, with the school bus? And the, the uh, he comes in with the wings. Oh, God. I can't you're be- losing me. I have no oh, idea. It's, it's, it's a horror movie. Oh, my God. All the kids were on the school bus. And they're not kids. They're high schoolers. I have no idea oh. what you're talking about. You think about that and you come back. Yeah. So, but anyway, it's HBO Max is trying to compete with like Netflix and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Disney. Prime. Disney and Prime. But anyway, they're trying to, they're, so they want to take away the guns. And the explanation I saw was completely ridiculous because you're still blowing up with dynamite. You're chasing them with a sickle. You know, there's all these other kind of violence. They just don't want to have guns. And so, like, it doesn't make sense to me, but as long as you're not taking away the old guns, then do whatever you want to yeah. do. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that you're serving any purpose whatsoever. Yeah, they just turned, to me, they be turning, and I re- realized what it was. They turned Elmer Fudd into Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, he's running around, you know, in the middle of a field with a sickle trying to cut, trying to cut bugs. What are you going to do with the sickle, man? You're going to cut impale him, in him. Yeah, you're going to impale him. Yeah. And it's going to be blood and gore, at least with the – he he never hit anybody. <laughs> Ever. Well, and they were talking about that Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam were irresponsible gun owners. And I was like, it's a cartoon. Uh, man. Just like they – they took away the bombs from them, you know, and no, they still have the bombs. That's even worse because you kill more with bombs than you do. Yo, I'm just, ugh. It, it makes no sense. None, but none, none. as long as they don't mess with what I remember. But see, here's my I thing. I don't care. Here's my thing. What is the reason for it? Because we never, you know, we grew up on those cartoons. We never went out. We didn't have school shootings. No, we didn't have church shootings. I mean, we used to go. We 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 were city city kids. We go play uh like we went to play GI Joe, we, dude. Did you I, play GI Joe? Yes, yes, all the time. Everybody played but GI Joe. We go play Hillsboro. Hillsboro was a former community. You go pull up to the school, you see pickups in the parking lot with rifles in the back window, and you never heard of a school shooting, right? Never. No. So to think that cartoons have that kind of an impact is uh, ridiculous. <sighs> But anyway, that's enough of my rant on that. Yeah, we both got to get out the soapbox on that I'm one. like, <laughs> well, to me, it's like you're making a new product. Make it how you want. I yeah. don't care. Just I'm not going to watch it. One, yeah. Just don't 
destroy what old, I man. remember. Because just like, I still like watching those old school cartoons. I guess you're going to go to the Three Stooges and change how Mo used to hit him upside the head all the or time. Or poke him in the eyes. Yeah, yeah. You, remember, you stop remember this move? Yeah, <laughs> put your hand up there <laughs> before the nose. And then he took both fingers and went beside him. Exactly. <laughs> So, anyway, it's that time of the show for the Moose Mountain Goods Coffee Giveaway. Yes, yes. Uh, we're definitely appreciative of Moose Mountain Goods. Moose Mountain. And I tell you, I've been drinking a lot of Ethiopian. You show up, you don't want coffee. No, no, no. You had coffee, but you got here late and it was cold. Yes. Sorry. I yes. did make you coffee. Yes. But you missed out. So, let's get to our audience. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Right there. All the people are right there waiting on us. They're looking. They're like, come on, Rob. So <laughs> this week's winner is George Harris. I thought you were going to say Harrison. I know, right? <laughs> I was going to say, really? Back from Really? The dead. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> to listen to us on top of that. Congratulations <laughs> to George Harris. You're this week's Moose Mountain Goods giveaway. You're going to get a bag of coffee. Mm -hmm. You get to pick if you want ground or beans. And all you have to do is send us an email. Go by the website, click on the contact, click on the email, and send me an email. And in the subject line, put Cigar Talk Winner. Yes. Now, in the body, you need to put your name, your mailing address, and if you want beans or ground. Or ground. Yeah. That's all what you got to do. What is his email? How does it identify? Uh, let's see. It ends in net. <laughs> okay. Dot net. <laughs> dot net. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the chance of the yeah. George Harris having a dot, dot net? net. <laughs> so, so, but if you guys, if you have not registered, go by our website and click on the register link. All you got to do is put in your name and email address. We're not going to bother you. We don't send emails out. Nope. So, you know. And what time do they have to have it done by? By next Sunday at 1800. <laughs> there it is. Hundo. <laughs> It's Texas, almost like right? a, it's almost like being at a Sunday NASCAR race. <laughs> Eighteen hundo, hundo, hundo. Anyway, I don't want to hear that hundo. <laughs> you ever been to a NASCAR race? Never. No, I'm lying. When I was an officer in Venice, we did part time security at the uh, racetrack in Venice, Madison. California. No, Illinois. Oh. Uh, they they took That's the way less exciting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they took the uh, it used to be a drag strip, but the owner he changed it into an oval, and he uh, he actually has the truck the NASCAR truck races there. Oh, really? So we used to have to do not have to we you do security there. Now, on, did you on, ever go over to uh, the Indianapolis Five Hundred? Nope, never been there. I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. I we were supposed to go one year, and something happened. I don't. You remember. know, I want to go to the Kentucky Derby before they end that. What do you mean before Man, they, they are, end that? They're saying we're doing everything. They're taking the guns away from Yosemite Sam. And they're probably saying that they you're abusing the horses, running them around. That there. is a possibility. See? So, I'm but do it I would love they to get do the Kentucky Derby. I'd love to do the mm -hmm. Indianapolis 500. Now, the NASCAR race, the very first year the Texas Motor Speedway opened, uh -huh. me and a buddy went and watched the qualifying runs. And we only got to see like three cars, and it started pouring rain. <laughs> so we, that was it. I've never been back. I've gotcha. always wanted to go. But, dude, when the race is in town, that place is a oh, nightmare. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah. I can believe it, man. Yeah, it, it, it it's crazy. It's packed. The only way to do it, in my opinion, uh -huh. is if you have like a motor home where you pull up yeah. and you're just there for three Tail, days. Tailgating, baby. Three yeah, days of tailgating. Exactly. Dude, yeah. those dudes tailgate. Ooh. Holy moly, they tailgate. Nobody tailgates harder than college football. Oh, good. I thought you were going to say the 49ers. No, nah, college football, man. The 49ers, do they even tailgate? Oh, yeah. they Because they don't have trucks. Yeah, yeah, they do. They have trucks and trailers. But they, they don't have trucks. But they do cheese and wine. And rice. <laughs> rice a <-roni. laughs> San Francisco <laughs> treat. I knew that's where you were going. <laughs> so, oh, I got to take a drink. Again? <laughs> Again? <laughs> Ugh, excuse me. So, anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this week's show. Hey, good one, man. Goes by quick. Yeah. And, uh, that's how things are when you're having fun. Yeah, it really is. And uh, if you guys are interested in supporting the show, f go by our website, yes. click on the Patreon link, and we actually do extra content for those guys. Uh, this week, 
we did a full video of the radio show. So every week we're also now on the radio in West Texas. And so we record a completely different show. Yes. And we video that. And that's available on the Patreon mm-hmm. site. But, you know, just go there and register. Become a Patreon. And then we have, like you said, those extra things for you. It's the video is us it's wrong i was just it's i was raw. trying i was trying to figure out a nice way eddie, of saying eddie it. murphy raw. yeah <laughs> it, it is unfiltered hey, that's what, what i'm gonna say unfiltered we're not entangled <laughs> patrick last night said the best part of being a patreon uh-huh. is seeing what goes on oh. when we're not recording oh yeah Oh yeah, because we are in we are true form. Yeah. <laughs> no, true form. We try to keep the show PG. relatively PG thirteen. So sometimes. if you're watching or if you're listening with your kids, yeah. you're not going to hear f bombs. Yeah, you're not. And so but now it, I can't say that on the pre-show. pre-show. <laughs> so I can't say that. We try to keep it clean for you guys, yeah. but on the pre-show, you're on your own. Most definitely. So that's paid content. <laughs> but we also want to say thank you to all our patreons. Oh, hundred You guys. Man. Uh, it's it's an honor to be supported and the we ability to, to do the videos because of the Patreon. Oh, absolutely! Man. I mean, the amount of equipment that we yes. bought to do yes. this is uh, I mean, because we we could have bought a yacht. Yeah, but you don't. We put everything back into this show. Everything goes into this show. Yeah, it really does. Everything. So anyway, guys, we hope you have a great week, and until next time, keep smoking. Keep smoking.